Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. Today I want to make a French pastry, a Gâteau Paris Brest. It was invented around the beginning of the 20th century to commemorate the bicycle race between Paris, France, and Brest up in Brittany and therefore it's a round circular pastry that's supposed to represent a bicycle wheel. I got a backstory that goes with this. I went to the grocery store to buy the ingredients. The clerk at the register could tell I was baking some sort of dessert and so she asked me what are you making and I tried to say in my best French accent a Paris Brest and she said to me you're baking a hairy breast? So much for my French accent. Let's get into the beginning of the ingredients. I have to make the praline candy first. For the praline, I need one cup, 125 grams of hazelnuts. I actually have a cup and a half here because I need some of these for the pastry later on and I might as well get them peeled and roasted all in one step, save some time. Two teaspoons baking soda, one half cup, 100 grams, of sugar, one quarter cup, 60 milliliters of water, one teaspoon lemon juice, one half teaspoon salt, and one teaspoon vegetable oil. I've been bringing water up to a boil here. This is going to foam up a lot. That's my baking soda. And now my hazelnuts. I'm going to set my timer for three minutes and what that'll do is that'll loosen that skin so it can peel off very easily. This is the easiest way to peel hazelnuts. After boiling these for three minutes I move them to a bowl filled with cold water. There was even a little bit of ice in there and I find the easiest way to peel these is just to use a piece of paper towel, put it in there and just kind of squeeze it and the peel just comes right off. Simple as that. Okay, I'm just finishing up here with my hazelnuts. I've been heating my oven up. It's uh, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 175 centigrade. I'm going to spread these on a baking sheet and then roast these for about 10 minutes. That'll dry them out and toast them up a little bit. So here are my hazelnuts, hot from the oven. Those roasted for 10 minutes. I'm going to let these cool a little bit and next I'm going to start caramelizing my sugar. I've got water heating on the stove and there's my lemon juice. And my sugar is going to go in there. I'm just going to stir this in to get this dissolved. And then once this starts boiling, I'm going to reduce my heat to low and I'm going to cook this, watching it closely, until it starts to change color and turn to a light to medium golden color. That's when the sugar syrup here will be starting to caramelize. I have set up on the side here a small baking sheet with some parchment paper onto which I've sprayed a little bit of non-stick coating. As soon as my praline mixture here is done, I'll be adding the nuts and then immediately pouring the mixture onto that baking sheet to cool. My praline here, my candy, has had a chance to cool down. One thing I didn't mention, speaking of cooling down, is to what temperature do you heat that sugar syrup so that you get it to the right stage? Well, you want to bring this up to the hard crack stage, which would be 310 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees centigrade. Hopefully you got a candy thermometer or a digital thermometer. What you want is a candy that will break like that. The hard crack stage. So my next step now is to grind this all up in a food processor. 
Another thing that I forgot to mention is, if you remember, I said at the beginning when I was going over the ingredients that I had more than a cup of hazelnuts, I did take out the extra that I need right after I roasted them. I'll be using those when I do the pastry. Okay, this is going to be really noisy. So there's all my candy. I need to chop that up and then add my salt and my oil and process this down to something close to a paste. Okay, that's reduced down nicely. There's my salt. Oh, that smells so good too. And my oil. And then I'm just going to run this for maybe two or three minutes just to really chop this down. All right, my praline, I ground this for two minutes. And hopefully I can help you to see what this texture looks like. It's almost like, um, almost like it's not as creamy as a peanut butter but it has a nice pasty, really fine texture to it. So I'm gonna put this in a bowl, set this aside, and my praline now is done. For my pastry cream filling, I have two teaspoons of unflavored gelatin, one quarter cup, 60 milliliters of water, one and a half cups, which is 355 milliliters of half and half, Five large eggs. I'm going to be using the yolks only. You can save the egg whites for making cat's tongues. There's a recipe for that on the website. One third cup, 66 grams of sugar. One and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. Three tablespoons of unsalted butter. That's chilled. One and a half tablespoons of vanilla extract. And then one cup, 237 milliliters of heavy cream, also chilled. So I'm going to be ret returning my butter and my cream to the refrigerator to keep those cold while I'm working with my other ingredients. I moved my water to a slightly larger bowl and I'm going to sprinkle my gelatin on the surface and let that sit for about five minutes to, to dissolve. So I have my five egg yolks there. I'm going to combine my egg yolks and my sugar first, just until that's smooth. Doesn't take much. Now I want to work in my cornstarch. Get all of that in there. There. And just bring that together until it's combined. All right, that's ready to work with. I've heated my half and half up to just about boiling here. It just started to bubble. So I'm going to work in about half a cup of this liquid just to temper my egg yolks. Okay, and then I'm going to whisk this into my half and half. I've got a pan of water on the stove here because when we're making a custard I always want to use a double boiler. In fact I was following a recipe one time in Cook's Illustrated by America's Test Kitchen and ended up with, or I started to end up with, scrambled eggs because it wasn't being done over a double boiler. Okay, this is just now starting to thicken. So this is the critical part. Stir, 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 because you don't want to scramble this. I'm going to be straining this through a strainer anyways later on just to make sure there's no lumps in it. But you want to be really careful at this point. I reduced the heat to low because I don't want the water to bubble up 
and get into my custard. You can see it's runny right now, but that will thicken after about eight minutes. So I'm gonna set my timer for eight minutes and just stand here the whole time and stir this. Oh, and one thing that I should have mentioned is I, you saw that I'm working with cornstarch. If you boil cornstarch, it, it loses its thickening power. Things will thin out. And therefore a lot of cooks work with flour. But if you work over a double boiler, you can protect that cornstarch. Because this isn't bubbling. You can see that's not bubbling. I don't have to worry about my mixture boiling here. There's my timer. Look at how thick that's gotten. Isn't that, I mean, that is a beautiful custard. Okay, one thing that I thought about while I was stirring this, let me turn my heat off, is how much water do you put in the bottom pan? Well, you wanna put just enough water so that the bottom of your inner pan just comes to rest on top of the water. You don't want your, your inner pan floating in the water because if you have too much water in there, then when it starts to boil, it's gonna bubble up between the two pans and you could get water into your custard. So you want just enough so that when your pan comes to rest in the, in the your inner pan comes to rest in the outer pan, the larger one, the bottom is just touching the top of that water. So now that's my custard, beautifully thick after eight minutes. I didn't lose any thickening due to using cornstarch. That's why I like using a double boiler. Thank you very much, America's Test Kitchen. So I put a strainer over a bowl. And by the way, to protect this bowl a little bit, to hopefully keep it from being shocked. It is a glass bowl. I set it over the hot pan for a few minutes just to warm up so I wouldn't crack the glass from thermal shock. I'm just going to push that through with the spatula. like so. And that'll break up any lumps and catch any that need to be caught. And that looks actually very good. So there is my custard strained and ready for my next step. Okay, to protect this from forming a skin, I cut a circle of parchment paper, which I buttered just lightly, and I'm going to press that onto the surface. And this has to cool now for at least 45 minutes before I'm ready for my next step. So there is my custard. This has been in the refrigerator for 45 minutes. It's not cold. This is like close to room temperature, but you can see how that's thickened up even more. So, but it has not gelled yet. The gelatin in there has not gelled. So my next step is to get out my stand mixer and start whipping things up to finish up my pastry cream. I've got my cold, heavy cream here. I'm going to whip this up. for about a minute on a low speed, just till it gets frothy, and then I'm gonna increase the speed to, what, medium, medium high, to whip it up to soft peaks. Once this got foamy, I actually increased the speed to high and kept going for about a minute and a half to where I would get soft peaks. It's not stiff peaks there. It's kind of droopy, so that's a nice soft peak. Now, I want to return back to my pastry cream. I'm going to put about half of this cream in there. And whisk this in until it's nicely blended. Let 
Oh, I want to taste that. That just looks so good. And then I want to put the rest of this cream in there. <clears throat> That looks good enough. And then I'm just going to fold this in. I don't want to lose my loft. You just gently fold this in. Until it's combined. Don't overwork it because otherwise you'll work out that foam, that loft. And that is looking beautiful. And my last step before I refrigerate this, I want to crumble this in because this is already kind of sticking to itself. I don't want to dump this in as one big huge lump. And then I want to just very carefully fold this in. So this gets chilled. In my case, you want to chill this for at least three hours. I'm actually going to chill this overnight. You can chill it as long as 24 hours. This gelatin in there, it will set up better because of that gelatin, but you can see it's not falling down. It still has some loft to it. So I'm going to chill this overnight and then tomorrow I'm going to bake the um, pastry rings and assemble my perfect gâteau Paris Brest.